We all know the system is broken, uh, but if we were to just wear a solutions hat for a bit. The solutions hat actually, by the way, comes in micro solutions. Things are evolving on a daily basis in the world. And for education, we should think about them also that way. Now, the best places that evolve are in the classroom and teachers can do that. And I've done that and I know more are doing that across the world. Because what we need to do is understand that that's the future. Like you look at Salman Khan and Khan Academy. He's first created all the content and now he's running schools with the flip classroom method where the kids are actually watching the content at home and in the class they're only engaging to discuss. Because if you think about it, what he's done is he's flipped the idea of how learning should take place. Traditionally, you go to school, the teacher teaches you content, you learn it and then you go home, you're given homework to solve. You know, and as you grow older, the complex questions that you're asked to solve are getting more complex. They can't even ask their parents for help. And the next day they go to school, they've already forgotten what they had to do or they move to the next thing because the teacher says, we don't have time. But what he's done is, he said, let's flip the, flip the model. Come to school, we'll work, we'll do all the questions in school. We'll solve your problems. We'll, and the content that you, bit pieces, if you learn, we'll assign that as homework. Now that makes it very easy for even parents to stay engaged with the child because what he's done is, Let's say a child is studying five subjects, 15 or 12 minute content pieces each for each subject. That's like an hour and a half at home watching content on video. That's all, that's maximum by the way. They'll watch it at home, come the next day for a six hours a day, they're actually working. Because, and also that's the theory of learning. You got to, if you apply what you've learned, you learn more, you learn better. So he's done that. But that's public schools. They still have to spend six hours in school. They do other things also, right, in America. But even for this exam, these exams that our kids sit for the O levels, the IGCSE, the A levels, the experiment I was doing a few years ago, and I'm still doing it now, is that you take the you take the whole you know content and you try to make more efficient version of the videos. Like I'll take I take I mean let's take first year subjects for subjects, A level subjects. This taught over two years, two years. By the way, out of the two years, that's a hard 104 weeks. A child is only in a learning classroom for less than 40 weeks of the 102 weeks. So you end up paying schools for 102 weeks of work where the child is only learning in about 45 weeks in two years. Can you can you just like break that down for me? So let's take a year, 52 weeks in a year. Yeah. Now, if you account for all the summer and winter holidays, I'm not talking about weekends here. You take the summer and winter holidays out. Mm -hmm. You take the weeks they have test weeks and you have the weeks they have midterms and you have the weeks they have exams. Mm -hmm. The remainder of the weeks that they're actually learning in a classroom, that's for most schools, that's 22 to 23 weeks only. Wow. So 22 to 23 weeks, you're paying double the fees really. First. Right. Then look at the hours. So if you think about even that, so 22, so you spend each subject in A-levels. Mm -hmm. Let's take A-levels example. Mm -hmm. You get an hour a day in classroom. So for 22 weeks, you got 110 hours of just sitting in a class listening to a teacher. Right. In addition to that, there is also, you got to solve questions, you got to go homework, practice possible. This is none of that all happening. Mm -hmm. So that's additional at home or during mock time and all that. Mm -hmm. So the kids are studying for, yes, the teacher is in, in, instructing them for 22 weeks, but the child is actually studying for 30 weeks or so. So 30 weeks, one hour a day per each subject, five days a week only, forget the weekends, right? And we know they, start, they should study on weekends, but let's say that, not that. So five times 30 is 150 hours the kid studies each subject. That includes listening to the teacher, whatever else. But if you do this digitally, if the part where he's going to learn the content or understand the sciences and the math and all that is condensed, it is not more than 60 hours, 50 hours of content. Really? Yes. 50 hours of the year's worth of chemistry or biology or physics. This, and obviously on top of that, Let's give him 50 more hours of practice. That's it, 100 hours, you have aced an A-level subject. Now, if you say, okay, my child, 100 hours, you can spend 100 hours, one hour a day. Literally, you can sp spend half an hour watching the videos, half an hour practicing every day. In 100 days, you have finished one year of A-levels. But nobody wants to tell you that because the schools are in the business of charging for the whole year because the system works like that. They have to pay teacher salaries for the whole year. No teachers working part time. I'd quit a school if they start paying me six months of the year. But then you find better and more creative ways to utilize their time. I'm not saying that 
you got to teach only a levels for a year what i'm trying to show you is if you can actually condense all of this and a levels is considered the harder of the two or, or igcs and a levels you can condense all of a levels into one hour a day a subject mm. you can actually just say you know what take study uh, either you can uh, study subjects in smaller chunks towards the last three months and then spend the whole six first six eight months learning the parts of education that we talked about the, the, the you know the creativity collaboration project work working in the real world community service helping people in your society all of that stuff can happen but because we have to spread this out over a whole year it becomes inefficient and on kids in era well they'll have a class they'll have a free period they'll have a class what's a free period is the period the teacher was not available to teach you or the school didn't have a classroom to teach you that's what a free period is in most a level schools why would you want a free period you should be given okay you know what come to school we'll do engage with you in more things they don't do that they no space the problem is also the government gives no space to schools at lower end to take up space so they've got to be more efficient and the school kids want to come to school 5 days a week but if you digitize learning what you can also say is come to school 3 days a week